Good morning, good afternoon, good night, everyone. Uh, so today you have a webinar with a VTT. Uh, that you present a little bit more about uh, the process of fabrication superconducting uh, junctions and device and applications from, from their processing. So before we start the webinar, uh, I will just do a short presentation on CMC and the service that we provide. And then I will pass uh, to uh, 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 Henan and Dipopan here, uh, who will present uh, from the VTT side. Uh, so, uh, so CMC, so just a short presentation of CMC. So CMC is a natural profit organization that started in 1984. Our goal is really to provide infrastructure for innovation for academics, uh, startups and SMEs. And today we enable a network of over 10,000 uh, academics and 1,000 dues participants. So uh, we provide service and technology access uh, in the areas of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, MEMS, microtrons, photons, and quantum computing for quantum technologies. And basically we offer three different types of service to support development applications uh, in the fields of quantum computing, quantum sensor, and quantum communication. So those services are quantum hardware fabrication, the quantum hardware design and fabrication, uh, quantum computers as a service, and, uh, and training activities that I'll enter a little bit more in details. So for the quantum hardware development, one of the things that CMC provides is access to uh, CAD tools uh, that are optimized for the design of a uh, superconducting quantum device, for example, and we have uh, uh, our, our, our network has access to all many different types of uh, simulation tools, such as COMSOL and SIS and SIS tools, but also uh, layout tools from Cadence and Siemens, for example. So here on the on the right side is, is an, uh, an example of, uh, of, uh, uh, of a superconducting quantum device uh, that was designed using, for example, one of the tools that you have access. So this is a, 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 a qubit uh, in a squid uh, format, a transmon qubit in a squid uh, in a squid uh, uh, geometry. That is have a flux line here, coupled to a, a, a readout line in a, a resonator here below. So in addition to the in addition to the uh, to the tools, you also provide a lab equipment that you can use to control, characterize, and measure quantum device. And we also can help startups, MECs, and academics with uh, some R and D, uh, doing some design work for you. So on the uh, more on the fabrication side, we provide a, a fabrication series throughout our much project wafer. So in this case, uh, we uh, CMC usually buys the full wafer of the minimum or the minimum area required by, by the foundry, such as uh, PTT. And uh, our, our, our customers, our clients uh, only buys uh, the design area that they needed. So that's a very cost effective for, for academics and SMEs that they can use this service to really prototype. And once you're ready, for example, for commercialization or you have a very uh, a high TRL product, you can already do a, a contract direct with the foundry and move uh, for more uh, large scale fabrication of device. So uh, to enable those services, we provide a food design kit, process design kit that contains, uh, we develop, for example, for the VTT process that contains a, a library of reference designs with several designs such as capacitors, inductors, uh, squids, uh, junctions, uh, coplanar wave guides, transmission line resonators among others uh, and we also provide you if you participate in the much project wave fabrication we also provide you with a design rule check so we we do once you submit the design to us for fabrication we do the design rule checking to be sure that uh, your design is really meeting uh, the constraints of uh, of the fabrication process so we are very happy to partner with VTT to offer uh, I think it's basically the world's first uh, much much project to a service uh, for a uh, superconducting quantum device. So this is available throughout CMC. So if you have, if you like to hear a little bit more about it, please uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can uh, help you to get access to this technology. And we're gonna also have new technologies in 2023. So in addition to the superconducting quantum device here, we also have a much 
much project to wafer service for many different many different technologies such as microelectronics and photonics and MEMS and uh, one of the main our main partners global founders and SMC for example uh, ST micro AMF and, and MEMSCAP so those are founders that you have access and many others so uh, just a more quick here uh, so we also offer quantum computers as a service so that means that uh, we also have access to the a quantum computer uh, IBM's quantum computer via uh, uh, the IBM Q Hub here in Quebec uh, throughout Pink, and here we support you uh, applications and development of coding uh, for your applic area of application. And uh, again, here we provide coding consulting roadmap assistance for startups and SMEs. Uh, just uh, on the on the on the training side. We provide what's called CMC base camp. So this is usually a, 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 a intensive a two or three weeks of tutorials, lectures, uh, and workshop with tools and design and simulations. So during this period of uh, the training, uh, the participants has access to uh, CAD tools. Uh, we also provide a fabrication service uh, together with the base camp throughout our multi project service. And we also provide support for testing. So we have several uh, base camp activities. So uh, going from advanced CMOS design uh, activity and passive photonics device. But uh, we, in the last uh, two years, we create three different service uh, base camp trainings for for quantum. So one is programming quantum computers. The other one is a base camp for superconducting quantum circuits. And we have a new one that is going to be a silicon quantum photonics and just a little bit more detail. So we start those uh, base camps basically in 2000. 21 and we already have trained uh, over 130 high qualified personnel on those activities and uh, they are done in collaboration with several institutions in Canada, such as Tutu Quantique uh, in Sherbrooke at the University of Waterloo, uh, the RQCU, the, the Quantum Matter Institute in BC, University of Victoria, uh, University of Calgary, and also some NSERC great programs here, uh, QCI Tech and Quantum BC. So just a, a, more, a little bit more detail, so we have the quantum chemistry with the gate-based quantum computing now in January. It's a virtual event. And the goal is really to teach you how to program IBM's quantum computer using Qiskit with uh, giving also some applications in quantum chemistry. Uh, the silicon quantum photonics uh, workshop is going to be in person from February 20 to 24 in Vancouver. So this is a train on design and simulation of silicon quantum photonics device. There is also a fabrication component if you're interested. And we have uh, in the summer 2023, the building your own superconductor device. Again, it's the world's first to teach participants how to design, simulate, and test superconductor device. Uh, they have access to the CAD tools and the fabrication of superconducting device. And participants participate in a design competition where they get awards. So that's uh, that's it for CMC. If you'd like to have learn more about uh, everything, please visit our page here in the bottom. And feel free to, to send me a May mail. Thank you very much. So now we're going to pass uh, the word to our speakers. Uh, so while I'm sharing, uh, I'm stopping presenting, and uh, and, uh, and uh, Deepapan can uh, can start sharing the screen. I'm going to introduce them. So I start uh, with uh, Hena. So uh, it's really a pleasure to have uh, you both here together. Thank you for accepting uh they are invite and uh Hena, uh, Hena Loreto he's a research scientist at uh, uh at DDT in the quantum sensors group he started there in March 2022 this year where he's been focused on uh, the fabrication process of superconducting device uh based on the process that you're gonna be describing here today uh, that has applications for uh superconducting wires uh, antenna junctions among uh, and among other devices. So Hena has a PhD from uh, uh, the Vissosa Federal University in Brazil. Uh, while he's a PhD, uh, he was also a visiting student at uh, uh, the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he worked in uh, infrastructure and non-magnetic structure, topological magnetic structure, topological insulators, uh, special, specializing in thin film growth and uh, 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 UUV uh, systems and nanofabrication. So uh, thank you, Hena, for being here. Uh, now, uh, Deepopan uh, Data. 
So he's also a research scientist in the quantum computing hard group at, at VTT. So he started there in January 2020. So Deepapan has a PhD in electro and computer engineer from the University of uh, Illinois uh, at Chicago uh, from in 2020, uh, 2018, where he was in quantum sensor development, phonon phon engineering, semiconductor semiconductor materials device. So before joining VTT, he was a, a postdoctoral scholar at the Department of Physics, uh, Mathematics and Astronomy uh, at uh, the California Institute of Technology in the US. Thank you, Deepapa. And uh, now uh, the floor is yours. Is yours. All right, <clears throat> thank you so much, Hudson, for the introduction. And uh, today we're going to talk here about the swaps processing for superconducting devices, a process that we developed at VTT for fabricating Josephson junctions and uh, devices based on Josephson junctions. But um, first I'll talk a bit, a bit about uh, VTT, give an overview of what VTT is, then I'll talk about the fabrication process of the swaps processing, and then after the book we'll give some overview in the current applications we're having on, on those superconducting devices based on the swaps processing. So about VTT, we are a state-owned company. It's like a, our mission is quite similar from what CMC does in Canada. So we have like more than 2,000 employees working on several subjects like before after, even digital technologies and quantum technologies, also 5G networks, biotechnology, food production, climate change, space applications, and you name it, like uh, a lot of different applications in the whole VTT network. The microelectronics and quantum technology uh, department at VTT is where me and Debopam are based. Uh, we work from design and prototyping and basically in research and development projects. Um, we have a lot of experts in the one very large clean room in the house. The idea of, of uh, our R&D project is to create a large IPR portfolio. And for that, we use mostly Finnish and European uh, research programs for funding. And one, one of the biggest news for this year, it's like we have now our in-house quantum computer, the Helmi, it's now available for use. I mean, it's now running and probably will be available for use. If it's not already available, it will be soon. Our structure here is based in, in Espo, in the Helsinki metropolitan area. Our building Micronova, it's like a 2,600 uh, meter square clean room. So we share this clean room the VTT, the companies, and also from the universities. So we have uh, mini lab characterization lab, we have low temperature characterization, we have high frequency characterization, optical, optical characterization. Uh, we have the whole structure for fabricating and for testing our devices here in house. So uh, yeah, the book can comment more on that later. Um, our process platforms include uh, MEMS, uh, photonic devices, and now we have uh, a new quantum photonics group as well, uh, graphene to D materials, and then in, uh, basically what we are more interested in here, it's like the quantum devices development that we have in-house. Uh, so VGT has been developing uh, and manufacturing superconducting devices since the 90s. So for 30 years, we have now more than 50 researchers working on quantum technologies here, plus engineers, operators, and the whole support from the from BTT. Uh, we have the clean room facilities, we have the measurement facilities here, everything in the same building. And then and now we have the, the, the Helmi, the quantum computer developed along with IQM with five qubits already running, and we have the goal for an upgrade, a 20 qubit upgrade 
to the next year. So uh, you, if you're interested in, in the, the Helmi applications, you can go to our website. I have a lot of information there about the, the public use. The quantum, the quantum technology groups works more in the, the hardware components for quantum computers, so superconducting devices in general, quantum CMOS, quantum dots, single photon detectors in collaboration with this, the photonics group, solid state coolers, squids that we've been doing for quite a long time in house, cryo CMOS, and also uh, quantum algorithms and software that you regroup here. So, uh, DGT is covering quite a lot of the quantum hardware, not only the qubits itself. And uh, as CMC do, like, feel free to engage with VGT. You have uh, providing R&D services, so IP investments, licensing, technology transfer, and everything. So uh, you can check everything on our website, and our group sites, and also would some here will be a point of contact between who is interested uh, in Canada and VTT technologies. So now I'm going to talk about one of the uh, technologies that was developed here in house is the swaps process, which is now available via CMC for the fabrication process. Uh, the swaps fabrication process SWAPS stands for sidewall passivated, sidewall spacer passivated Josephson junctions. So it's a method that we developed for fabricating Josephson junctions in wafer scale in a reliable way and reprodu reproducible way. Uh, here we can fabricate ju uh, junctions from sub micron sizes to tens of micron sizes using optical lithography and VTT. As I said, it's been developing superconducting devices based on the Josephson Junction since the 90s for more than three years. So you can see here like squids made in a house in the early 90s and here squids made uh, in house also in the 2020s. So we've been for 30 years working on superconducting devices. So we have a, quite a lot of experience on that field. So. And also the swaps process, it's like one uh, one process that we developed, we have this uh, conventional method for superconducting Joseph Sol junctions that people use for qubit applications. Those processes are based on liftoff process when you deposit and then you remove the resist or the, to pattern the, the junctions you want. So have, if I say the most, two most widely used for quantum computer, the double angle evaporation and this Manhattan style Josephson junctions. But in the swaps process, we do not in the lift off, we do the opposite way. So it's a top down process for lithography. The process itself, we start as a, with a tri layer deposition. We use sputtering for that. So we, here, the most common uh, materials you use, but not limited to that, it's the niobium, aluminum, aluminum oxide, niobium junctions. So in the first, the first steps, like to deposit the whole tri-layer, so niobium, deposit 100 nanometers of niobium, then 10 nanometers of aluminum. Then you go, this aluminum goes to an, an oxidation process, then you form a very thin aluminum oxide layer here, and then you deposit another niobium layer. This makes that uh, the basis of the Josephson junction. So you use niobium with critical temperature around 8K, the aluminum, the process of the oxidation of aluminum is what defines the critical current at the, the junction. So it's a very important step here. And also all those interfaces, since we don't take the wafer out of the vacuum before depositing them, it's all done in vacuum. So the interface, uh, we have a good interface, which is crucial for, a, for having a good junction there. And uh, as I mentioned, like we, have, we can use different materials in the base and counter electrode, they are not only limited to niobium, they can be a whole range of materials. So the second step is to pattern this tri layer. So we use this top down fabrication method. So instead of using lift off, we just pattern and then we grow the layer and then we pattern, and then we etch. 
using the re reactive ion etching. Uh, for pattern in whole wafer, we use stepper lithography, which is fast and reliable, and fast and reliable for full wafer fabrication. And it's uh, very reproducible method. So we use this stepper to pattern, then reactive ion etching to pattern the dry layer. Then the next step is the, the spacer itself. So we deposit a, a layer of PCVG silicon oxide. And here you can see that we have a very good step coverage for this uh, silicon oxide. Here we don't pattern anything. We just grow the silicon oxide and then we etch in a, in a, also in reactive ion etching. While etching this layer, we, we can have, we form a, a, a thin polymer in the sidewalls. So we passivate the sidewalls and then it protects the silicon oxide here from being etched. The advantage here is when we, when you grow like our second diobium layer that connects the, the counter electrode to this wiring layer, this uh, silicon spaces prevent the base layer from the second diobium layer to be connect to be electrically connected to each other. So here you can form a very good insulation insulation between the base electrode and the counter electrode, and also we make it easier for the second layer to climb over the whole stack. So after patterning this NB2 layer, then we have like our first niobium layer in light blue. Then they will have the, our spacer form uh, around the, the whole structure. Then we have this NB2 wiring layer. So here you can see how the whole stack will, looks like in this cross section image. So we have niobium, aluminum oxide, niobium. Then this niobium 2 layer with the spacer here. Then we can as I said, we can prevent this, uh, for example, this, li this leakage from this niobium base layer to the niobium 2 layer. So the junction itself, the junction area itself, is only the junction area here. And this is a micrograph on how the junction looks like after the two layers are patterned. So we have very qu high quality junctions, very well defined junctions. And we also can make like we can make single junctions. We can make chains of junctions. Here you can, uh, but by following the design rules, you can you can design every kind of uh, every kind of device you want. Like if it's one junction or a, a very very long chain of junctions, all of them will look the same. We have very similar properties. So very re reliable and reproducible process. The all, all of the properties of the junctions are dependent here, both on the size of the junctions, which is this D dimension here, and in the oxidation process that I mentioned in the first step. So the oxidation process will define how thick the aluminum oxide barrier is. It will also define the, the, the critical current. So when designing the device, so it's a multi multi wafer multi-device wafer, so all of them need to share the same critical current density, so you can control also the critical current for your device by changing the size of the junction. So here you can see uh, different junctions, sizes and with different critical currents, for them here around 25 microamps to 4 nanoamps by 4 points, I can't remember, it's quite small for me here, but I guess it's 4.5 micron junctions and 0 0.2 micron junctions here. Uh, so we can also control, as I said, we can control this by the oxidation and we have a very good, uh, very good reproducibility with different sizes of junctions here from so micron to tens of microns as well. Ideally, from junctions, the, the ideal size for the junctions here for us is like well, above one micron, since we have less uh, less spread in the characteristics. But also for the junctions, that also work for sub micron as well. And I mean, all of the, the device, like the design rules that we shared, 
with CMC where you are going to make your devices so they need to it's good to follow so we can optimize uh, the fabrication for your devices so for example the junctions we have uh, here are our first layer of niobium here our second layer of, ni of niobium uh, this first layer after the pattern it will be 100 nanometer thick and then the second layer number two will be 120 nanometer thick here you can see some parameters of this of our niobium layer then while pattern you, you need we have as we do this top down method like we grow and then pattern and edge we have some line width reduction that we need to take into account as well while fabricating your devices but that's uh, uh, it's something systematic so you can just take it there, take that into account and you don't have uh, more problems so we have a very good alignment between the niobium one and niobium two layers we put here like less than 200 nanometer but usually it stays in less than 50 nanometers so so yeah we have a lot of uh, quite good outcomes of this, the, those devices based on the swaps process since it's first published in 2017. And now I'll give the floor to Debopan, he'll talk a little bit more about uh, where those devices are, where those, this swaps process is, going, is being used in our applications. So, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you, Yunan. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction and setting the stage for me. And thank you, Wilson, for giving the opportunity to talk about uh, the application of this nice technology that we have here. Uh, so in the following slides, I'm gonna show some of the applications that we, some of the devices that we have been fabricating uh, with this uh, technology uh, and the material stack that's available through CMC and it ranges from traditional superconducting circuits to more, more towards currently featuring this quantum 2.0 sort of applications. Um, so here, one of the applications, I hope my slides are visible. Uh, so here, one of the application is we have been fabricating this kind of squid based, uh, just as some parametric amplifiers and we have developed this technology or, or these kind of devices through this four year uh, European Union <coughs> project, uh, Cubix, uh, along with this, our partners at uh, Germany and France. And the purpose of this device is to um, perform experiment with quantum illumination and communication in the microwave regime and um, to establish a quantum microwave link between two quantum systems. And this device application process is very much compatible uh, with the process that's been available with CMC. And here on the left, you can see sort of a device that we have fabricated, fabricating a nominally identical device in a uh, sample holder, wire bonded, and this is sort of similar device from our, our publication from our collaborator through this Cubix project. They have published uh, this kind of humming result on this parametric amplification uh, with these devices. Um, so now, <clears throat> so this is sort of like very standard application and I'm already here talking about something directed towards this quantum 2.0 application, this parametric amplifications. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about what, um, what else we are doing with this technology and where it's actually heading. So just to, just a quick um, uh, recapitulation of what Renan already mentioned and what we have been doing. So you have seen this kind of uh, niobium 1 and niobium 2 junction layer and then niobium 2 wiring layer connecting to other uh, components in the circuit. And then we have also developed this technology further uh, towards more additional layers uh, with this kind of, you can see niobium 3 and additional uh, flux, niobium 3 and other layers on the top. Uh, here mainly you can see 
uh, the Navigam 3 we have used mainly for flux biasing uh, for this kind of squid devices. And then the, 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 the uh, Josephson junction stack is pretty much the same what uh, Renan has demonstrated previously. These are sort of, you can check out these publications for the results in these devices. Um, okay, more, more application and more complicated applications in with these squids and this kind of flux bias. Uh, we, we, where the flux biasing is available, we have this wide application in MRI. Uh, and then also this space application with ESA, we, we have squid amplifiers for reading out DSA arrays and uh, stuff with this X-ray camera very recently. Uh, developed with ESA. Um, so then moving forward uh, toward another application that this technology have found toward this quantum application is this Josephson oscillator based uh, Josephson oscillators using capacitive Shunde Josephson junction um, towards the detection of cryogenic uh, microwave sources and um, you can see it's a very high impact factor publication from our group uh, within VTT and uh, our collaborator here at uh, with Alto with exceptional noise performance and um, nice result demonstrated here with this developed with this swaps process. Uh, more complicated application and we have been working on, uh, we have made significant progress on developing the technology readiness level of this technology of parametric amplifiers for superconducting uh, quantum computing um, and other quantum device readout. So we have a very uh, <clears throat> exhaustive uh, investment in developing parametric amplifiers ranging from couple hundred megahertz to 16 gigahertz pretty broad wide band. Um, we have multiple devices and we are working on this kind of application and here you can see um, two of our um, recent publication uh, with this parametric amplifiers where this huge array of Josephson junctions were fabricated using this SWEPs, uh, modified random SWEPs processes. Uh, okay, so more 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 uh, activities within VTT. So uh, as as of today, we have very reproducible niobium based superconducting resonator uh, fabrication technique already established, and on a regular basis we uh, fabricate this CPW resonators with one million uh, Q internal quality factor that single photon limit um, and here one of our very recent publication where we have extended that technology to develop it through silicon valve years on uh, chip and here you can see the results where we have demonstrated very high quality factor even with this kind of through silicon wires which are very relevant for this kind of large scale quantum processor uh, development and fabrication. Uh, now, as we have moved into this kind of qubit uh, superconducting quantum computing application, I would like to show some of our very recent results where uh, the motivation here to set up a baseline technology for developing superconducting qubits in house. Uh, so, we use this kind of niobium million. Q resonator, and then we fabricate uh, these kind of st standard um, Manhattan style Josephson junction, uh, which is coupled with the couple to resonator, and we do in towards developing uh, quantum uh, processors. So here you can see on the right one of our very recently fabricated chip uh, with eight resonators. Uh, with qubits on end, um, just a junction on end, and then they are coupled to a single superconducting uh, transmission line for readout of these resonators standard 
see uh, some circuit QED uh, day out there. Uh, we, we, we have been get we have developed this technology and we have a established process flow for doing this uh, fabricating these devices. And here on the left, I show okay. So we have been fabricating this kind of qubit here. You can see this kind of avoided crossing. Uh, uh, and, uh, sorry, the flux uh, flux vulnerability of the uh, squid loop at the end. And you can see the squid on the right, and you can see the signature of photon splitting of the down resonator, which is like signature of having a uh, server a uh, working qubit at the end of the resonator, superconducting resonator. Uh, now we have also now measurement capabilities. We have developed this measurement capability to do like large scale T1 and uh, T1 and T2 measurements. Uh, on this qubit and uh, so we have recently measured this kind of qubit and we are, we are very happy with this kind of very high uh, T1 results and um, we are actually developing, we will be using this to uh, cal uh, calibrate superconducting quantum devices in future with this kind of uh, measurement capabilities in-house. But currently our research interest is sort of focus on this qubit uh, application towards improving base metallization and developing some junction process without lift off, like standard as Renan mentioned, and SWAPS is definitely a way to go with it. Uh, and then also the compatibility with this kind of TSV and 3D integration, we have significant effort and one of our previous, I showed one of our previous application and we have published these results really recently. Uh, that provide that ends my sort of overview of uh, the application and what we are doing with this kind of technology within VTT um, and we are looking forward to developing this with CMC also. Thank you.